Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. We are moving into part number three of the Arkham Horror 3rd Edition playthrough. There's a couple things I want to make mention of before we get going. These are just really minor things, but I thought they were worth mentioning. The first thing was when we got our very first Doom token, which was placed up in the East Town location, I placed that Doom token, actually, which I received, on the Deja Vu card itself, where if there's three Doom tokens, we're going to go ahead and flip this. What the actual rules state is you just simply, instead of putting it on the Codex card itself, is you actually put it on the Scenario card, which is this card right here, the one that you've set up your scenario for. So you just place it there, and then once there's three Doom on that Scenario card, then you go ahead and flip the Codex. The reason you don't put it on the Codex is because you're constantly flipping them, so so if you have a bunch of tokens on them, you're just going to be managing a bunch of tokens flying around all the time. So just put them in the scenario sheet, super easy. Another thing I'd like to clarify is just about the rumor. So we got a rumor in the last part and it has a headline, or this was a headline card I should say, and it's a rumor. And basically this particular rumor is going to trigger every time we get a Reckoning token from the Mythos Cup. So the thing to remember with that is it all really hinges on how many actual um, Reckoning tokens there are in your Mythos Cup. And currently for this scenario, the one we're playing at this level of difficulty, there is just one. So there's not going to be a trigger effect as often as I might have assumed it was going to be in the last part. So we might be able to kind of ignore that and hope that it doesn't come around to hurt us. Also, if we pull another headline card, which looks like this, the back, then we are able to replace this rumor if it's another rumor. So that's kind of interesting too because some of the other uh, Arkham Horror, uh, or I shouldn't say Arkham Horror, but HP Lovecraft based games in Fantasy Flight's library are more about putting multiple rumors out like Eldritch Horror, which can become an absolute nightmare of many rumors you're trying to mitigate and manage at the same time. Uh, so what's really cool with Arkham is it literally replaces one, which means you could be near and very close to trouble and then a new rumor comes out and totally wipes it away. So that's kind of a, you know, do you wait? Do you solve it? All those things are decisions you have to make. All right, guys, that's all I actually wanted to mention before we get into the playthrough. So as promised, let's get into it. So we're going to start off the round here with Calvin. Calvin's going to go first this time, and Calvin's going to go into, I believe, downtown is where I want him to go. I need him to get another clue. Now, we have this occult ritualist here who's been sitting here on this street and will never move because it doesn't have any movement. It's constantly going to be dropping doom tokens in one of these three spaces, but I get to pick every time it does. And every single time it activates, it will do that. It's not that bad, so I'm not going to waste a whole action just moving into here and then attacking it because I'm burning an entire turn to deal with just one doom every round so I'd rather just wait until I have a window of time which may never come who knows uh, to just jump in there and waste around I really want to progress the story so in order to do that I need to go after these clues there's clues in downtown at north side as well as the river town which we're not in currently any of those locations right now the other thing that's really important is I want to get uh, Agnes to the other side of the board where the anomaly is to start dealing with that she has a really high lore and that's going to help her against the anomaly there getting rid of some of the doom and all that good stuff so we're going to try to split them up at this point and see what they can accomplish so calvin's going to go from here he's going to move into downtown area the question really becomes where does he want to stop arkham lets him basically um kind of gain some sanity back by spending money i don't have any sanity damage so that's kind of a waste uh this is influence and observation he's a three on both of those so this is actually a decent spot for him to gain money again money will allow him to go extra steps of movement up to two if he spends two bucks or just one for one buck independent squares way up here and he can get some uh, items and stuff like that so that one's a really good one too plus there's a doom there maybe i could get rid of but honestly i'd rather just kind of stick it out here because if i'm here i'm within two of the doom where i currently can come back and, and deal with it or i could actually jump over to rivertown really quickly with two so let's just have him go to uh la bella luna so a movement of two that's one action and then for his second action uh, well, I guess that's the question too is if he's got one action to burn Then maybe I just go ahead and ward this away for two remnants I mean, I don't know why I wouldn't try his lore is not fantastic But I shouldn't say that because he's got remember that spirit dagger that gives him the plus two when he's warding away things So that's pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and use it. He's actually really good at warding. I don't know why I said that um, Okay, so five dice going into this and we basically are going to be testing to remove doom and we can go ahead and remove equal to our test result if we get two of them we get a remnant for him and we did we have two successes so both the doom has been removed from there that's awesome um, so that will likely help us out and we also gain a remnant for that 
So just so you guys are aware of how many remnants each of our characters have, now Calvin has two, and also Agnes has two. We also have a clue each, so we only need one more clue on our person, and then we can use research actions in order to put them on the Codex card Deja Vu in order to progress the story, which we really, really want to do. So we're, again, that's my focus with uh, Calvin is now that he's gone ahead and warded here for one action, he's going to use his other action to get into an area where he can encounter hopefully a clue for Lucky. So that's his turn all said and done. Uh, one other thing I want to say about Calvin, he's got a really cool ability that I haven't been able to use yet, but as an action, you can go ahead and exchange any amount of health and or sanity with another investigator or ally in any space. Very cool. Like, literally anyone and from any space. It's crazy. But as of right now, in terms of management of uh, sanity and, and health, the only person that has any of that is Agnes, and Agnes has just this to deal with currently, so it's not too, too bad. But at some point, if she starts getting overburdened, I could, as an action, basically take on some of that and maybe put it onto his... His, um, his until the end of time card or maybe onto something else uh, which is really cool or onto its own person if I want to kind of hold some of the load okay so he's done we're gonna move on to Agnes Agnes you are going to head up to I believe it makes sense to head towards the anomaly Okay, so Agnes is going to activate now. We're going to take her from here. Now, she's got a long journey to make. We're going to have to spend some money to make it happen. So first off, we'll move two for an action, which gets her to La Bella Luna. She's then going to spend the last $2 that she has in order to push herself onwards um, all the way to Velma's Diner, which has two Doom as well as a robed figure. And we also can encounter an anomaly here. And we'll be able to do all of that for the first time. You guys will be able to see that. So she has paid her 2 bucks which will disappear from her inventory. And at this particular point in time, she still has one action to spend. Okay, so we're up here at East Town with Agnes Baker. She's got one more action to spend. She's currently in the space. She doesn't need to engage anybody because she's got that really cool uh, tattered cloak that she picked up earlier in the last playthrough. You'll notice here that non-epic monsters ignore her, but uh, they don't engage her unless you attack or damage them. So remember, you... I'd have to actually initiate the combat and they'd have to be engaged with me for them to start hurting me. Uh, and it's very thematic because if you have your cloak on and you don't engage anybody, you're essentially not going to be harmed by having this cloak on. But if you choose to engage one and attack one and do damage to it, it knows you're there, it's angry, it doesn't matter what you're wearing at that point, it wants to hurt you. That's kind of the, the idea there. So. As of right now, she could walk around East Town and nobody would hurt her because we have no non-epics on the board, so she'd be completely fine. But, you know what? I want to get rid of these robe figures, um, and I'm already there, so I might as well just try to attempt to do it. So her general strength is just a 2, and that's all she has for her base attack. She does have Wither. It's optional. I can choose to roll it afterwards. I have to roll her lore, and I can add to her test result if I succeed. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that could happen potentially if, uh, if I need to do that. She also would have to take sanity damage, all that good stuff, but she can mitigate it with health. She's got a whole bunch of interchangeable things going on there, but I'll explain them if I land on them. And we've talked about them even in, and you've seen it once in the last part too. So we're rolling two dice. We're going to see whether or not we can take this robe figure out. So I'm going to choose to attack the robe figure, which immediately engages me. So now this individual knows that I'm there and I'm attacking it. So this, you know, going forward, if I don't kill it, it's going to hurt me. Uh, it will hit me for one damage when it activates, and I only need one damage to kill it. The combat check is pretty, it's pretty much a wash. It's just basically a general strength check. But this now sits in front of Agnes as an engaged character. So let's go ahead and roll and see if we can take this robe figure down. Well, that's pretty good. So two sixes, I think that thing is dead. So that would be, uh, that's that's perfect. That's really all we needed. So the two damage, it only takes one damage. So boom, that robe figure no longer exists. Another monster down. Perfect. Well done. Okay, so that actually was, that was exactly what I wanted to happen. So everything worked out perfectly there. Um, and I think at this point now, we're just going to be, we're completely finished all of our, um, all of our activations for our individuals. So we can move right into the monster phase. So we're going to go ahead here and activate our monsters. The robe figure knows that the unstable space currently is Hibbs Roadhouse because Hibbs Roadhouse is on top of the discard pile uh, for the event deck and the Doom token, or I shouldn't say Doom token, the Doom icon is on Hibbs Roadhouse. So this robe figure is heading over here. All right, so he's lurking around. But again, remember, he's not going to initiate or engage uh, Agnes at all because she's got her cloak on unless she chooses to go after it. The Occult Ritualist is on the other side of the board, so let's find out what that guy does. So the Occult Ritualist is way over here. He has to put one Doom token on any adjacent space. He has no movement. He doesn't go anywhere. So we're just going to go ahead and take a Doom. I'm actually going to put it right here on La Bella Luna. The reason for that is because I want it to be 
if our if my characters are actually up in the northeast side of the board, I want the doom to be as close to us as possible because then we can actually mitigate, change it, and and remove it if we need to by warding it away. If I start placing it back where I was here in Merchant District, there's no clues down there, and it's silly to put doom further away from you and have to spend money to get all the way to the other side of the map. It's better to keep the doom close to you. I know that sounds terrible, but at the same time, it just makes sense, especially because we're doing a decent job of controlling the doom. Uh, but then at least I can, you know, I can interact with it if I need to in order to get rid of it. So the one doom token will be there. And at some point we are going to have to go there and get rid of that thing because it will become just an annoyance. Time for the wonderful encounter phase. So this is the first time we've been in a space with an anomaly. So basically when an anomaly is sitting in a, in a particular neighborhood, every single space is affected by that anomaly. You are not going to pull an encounter card for Velma's Diner. You're going to pull one of these cards, which we placed beside the board at the beginning of the game that are specific to this scenario. So we're going to go ahead and draw one. And at the very, very, in actually when you flip this card over, you'll see there's three dis different listings. And you're like, what is that? Those are doom tokens. And basically it matters how many doom tokens are in a space. Because remember, at max, a space can have three, because three in a space would create an anomaly, and then any more Doom tokens that get placed there would go to the scenario card. So that's why this card only goes up to three. Um, otherwise, you can have zero in a particular space if you've warded it off and cleaned it out, or you could have one to two. We currently have two, so we got to go ahead with the middle kind of scenario there and see whether we can deal with it. So let's read this out and find out what we have to do. You find yourself reliving some of the darkest moments of the American Revolution. You suffer too horror. Okay, that is bad. So that, that really didn't give us much time to, uh, to deal with things. So two horror right off the bat. That's bad. She's up to four horror. So can I do anything about this? Not necessarily. I could take, I could take, um, oh, that's really bad. That's really bad. And her ability blood casting does not help here because that's only when I'm I'm actually casting a spell that I can take it as health damage. I was thinking about taking it as health damage because then I'm at the diner and maybe later on I can actually pay to eat my way to health. But this is really nasty. So I might need to use Calvin's ability next turn to actually put some of this sanity onto the until the end of time. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. But for now, Agnes is going to take this two sanity. So that's really nasty. Ouch. Remember her max is six. She's got four. Abruptly, you find yourself alongside General Washington and knock him out of the path of a bullet just in time. You remove two doom from your space and gain a remnant. Nice. Okay, so we're going to take the two doom that are in here, remove those, and a remnant will be gained by Agnes. She'll now be up to three. So just so you guys understand how the Doom tokens work and how this whole mitigation of, of Doom on a space that has an anomaly works. So just another thing too, there is one Doom here, just because you can't see it off camera, but we basically have these two spots. What happens is as soon as I remove the Doom from all the spaces that has an anomaly on the neighborhood, then the anomaly is removed. So that's the nasty thing. If any more Doom for any other game reason is placed in this neighborhood that has an anomaly, it doesn't matter that it no longer has five on the neighborhood, it's going on the scenario card. That's very important to remember because otherwise the game becomes a lot easier if you don't do that. It's nasty. So if there's any other effect that would cause Doom to land on this neighborhood, even though none, you know, the spaces leading up to getting the anomaly uh, are, have changed because uh, before we had two here, which meant five. So you'd think that, oh, we have a max of five, then every other doom after that goes on the scenario sheet. That's just the cap to get up to the anomaly. After that, you still have to remove every single doom off the neighborhood before you can actually take that anomaly away. And any other new doom goes on the scenario card. So hopefully that's crystal clear because that's actually uh, quite a big, uh, you know, that's easy to trip over in the rules. And I've actually heard some people play it differently and then realize they were playing it wrong. So just remember that 100%. But that is going to conclude Agnes's encounter. Let's head over to Calvin and see what happens with him. Calvin, 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 you are at the LaBelle Luna, and we have to draw an encounter for you in the downtown core. Let's hope that we actually end up pulling a clue token. Oh my gosh. Yes. Amazing. Okay, guys, you ready for this? Let's do this. The storefront is boarded up. You ask a passerby what happened. You've been out of town? It's been like that since the Sheldon gang shot the place up a few months ago. You gain one clue from your neighborhood. Hey, that was beautiful. Awesome. We have three clues. Yes, we can finally progress the story. Awesome. I shouldn't say finally. We're actually doing pretty good. We haven't really played that many rounds yet, but we have got the three clues we need fairly easily, I think. I don't really know. We'll see. Um, 
It also says uh, that you search the premises of La, the La Bella Luna. So we're going to use our observation now to search. And Calvin's observation is three, so we're going to grab three dice. And we're going to cross our fingers and hope we get at least one success on this. Oh, I just got one success. Okay, it says if you pass, you find some cash. You gain three money. Perfect. So Calvin is going to go from three dollars to six dollars. So here is the new three bucks that he just gained. So he's got a total of six just for you guys reference. That's off camera, of course. And we have now finished the encounter phase. And because we finished the encounter and gained a clue, don't forget this card does not get discarded into a random junk pile discard. It goes into the event card discard pile right on top because that's going to keep us another reference for the unstable space, which if referenced as of right now, would be Independent Square, which is actually right here. So that's where our robed figure, which is over here, will start heading towards when he activates, if it still remains like that for the event card discard. It is now time for the Mythos phase. Let's go ahead, I got the bag here. Now guys, there's only two tokens left in the bag. So at this point, what'll happen is we'll resolve these two because we gotta pull two out for our first character and then two out for our next character. So we're gonna have to put all the other tokens back in the bag in order to grab two more. So the last two are, or these last two in the cup are going to Agnes. So Agnes is gonna go ahead here and she's got two. Now I can choose which way I wanna resolve these. That's another thing that's really cool, guys. You're allowed to pull both tokens and choose which one you resolve first. That's something that I hadn't done in previous parts but it's very important because it's very strategic uh, how you want to go ahead and do this. So for me, I'm actually okay with doing uh, the, I, I'm okay with doing the headline first. If it's actually a new rumor, it'll, it'll change the rumor. Let's just see what we have for the headline. I'm kind of curious. Look at that, we got another rumor, haha. <laughs> Okay, astronomer, and this is not necessarily a good thing either, but astronomers chuffed as stars align. 1,000 years in the making, stars, planets in a unique configuration, no cause for alarm, authorities say. All right, headline rumor, add this card to the codex and discard all other rumor headlines. Reckoning, each investigator tests their will and each investigator who fails places one doom in their space. Oh, that's bad. Then any investigator may spend one clue to discard this card. Huh. Interesting. Okay, so we can spend a clue to burn it away. That's not bad. So now the rogue comet approaches is out of here. So it's almost like the ch story is changing as you go through the gameplay, which is really cool. The headlines, the newspapers, and things like that. Again, it's keeping it a very focused, local kind of feel to the game uh, instead of the high up map view that Eldritch Horror does. But that resolves that particular token. Now let's move into this nasty one. So this one is the Spread Doom token. We're very familiar with this. We're discarding the bottom card of the event deck uh, face up and placing one Doom token in the location that has the icon marked with the Doom icon. Uh, so we're going to pull the very bottom one. I got River Town. So which one is it? It is Graveyard. So the Graveyard is going to gain a Doom token. The Graveyard's actually just off screen. All right, so the graveyard is going to gain another doom. That's not good. So one more in the graveyard and anomaly could show up in Rivertown. So that's something to be aware of. And then the card which we actually pulled is going to be discarded into the event card discard. So now that one's on the top and graveyard will be the focus for the unstable space. So that resolves Agnes's Mythos Cup pull. Now we're going to do Calvin's. And how this works is at this point, we've gone through all of the Mythos tokens for this scenario. So when the cup is empty, you replenish by putting every single token that is in this scenario back in the cup. That includes the ones I just used when the cup happens to run out in the middle of the Mythos kind of uh, phase. So you don't want to think that, oh, okay, we just use these, leave those out. No, everything goes back because the whole idea is that the Mythos Cup is being completely replenished for the entire scenario. So we're gonna take these two, we're gonna drop them into the cup, we're gonna shake it all together, we're gonna grab two out for Calvin. Here we go. Remember, we can resolve these in any order we choose. So we got another headline, okay. Here's hoping for a blank space, that would be wonderful. Come on, no, 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 no indeed. So which one of these tokens do we want to resolve first? Uh, I'm kind of thinking the headline. Let's go the headline first. So we'll do the headline token. Let's grab a card and see what we get. This is for Calvin, remember. Asylum overflowing. Ooh, that sounds fun. Uh, new patients describe a sense of dread, hallucinations. Doctor, doctors are releasing some non-violent patients early. Oh, by Rex Murphy, staff writer of Arkham. Cool. Uh, the headline here is you suffer one horror for each doom in your space. Uh-oh. This is not good. Okay, so 
Calvin's currently in LaBelle Luna. There is a Doom there, so he's going to be taking one Sanity. And luckily for Agnes, she resolved all the Doom there in the last one. Otherwise, she would have gotten two more, and that would have actually killed... Holy, that would have actually ended her right there. That's insane. <laughs> oh my gosh. That Guys, that's crazy. That was super close. Agnes would have literally gone insane if she hadn't gotten the Doom removed that turn and happened to be in that space. That's how close she is. So we're going to really have to do something about her Sandy because this that this is a really good reminder of how dangerously close we are to losing one of our investigators. And we don't want that to happen yet. She's so good. I, I enjoy her character. She's got a lot of good abilities. So anyway, we're going to suffer a damage, or I should say a horror. And the cool thing is, it's actually kind of coming from, thematically coming from the Arkham Asylum, and there's Calvin right kind of next door to that. So kind of makes sense that he would actually suffer a horror from all the crazy people coming out of the uh, asylum towards La Bella Luna. So there's one horror. This is actually the first time he's gotten um, a horror damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place this horror damage on his uh, Until the End of Time card. We talked about this card earlier. It's a really cool card that he can use over and over again, and basically he can remove it. It can't be discarded in any way, but it's kind of treated as if he can put things on it, and when Reckoning triggers, it can remove stuff. So he's going to put his Sandy on there because he's got an amazing, innate uh, ability there. So, done. Okay. So that is that token resolved. So we'll remove this. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the next one, which is spawn a monster. Yay. Not really. Okay, here we go. What do we get for a monster spawn? Oh my gosh. Eyeless Watcher. We always pull that from the bottom of the deck, remember? And it's spawn at the unstable space, which has now been changed to the graveyard. So that's going to be right here. So he's going to be spawning down here. Yikes. And it's a hunter keyword on this particular card too. So that's going to be interesting. It's going to be moving toward the and engaging when it activates the individual with the lowest influence. And that is going to be Agnes Baker. So that's actually not bad because it'll move towards her, but just not engage her. So that actually worked out pretty good. Whew. And the reason it won't engage her is because of this wonderful tattered cloak that she has. Unless, of course, she engages it or attacks it and puts damage on it in some way. Okay, so that is it, guys. We've gone through the whole round. We have resolved all the Mythos tokens for the Mythos phase. So now we are going to start a brand new round. All right, so we're beginning a brand new round. I'm super excited for this because we can actually get the clues on the scenario card and start pushing this Deja Vu uh, Codex card forward, hopefully, if we're lucky. So how we do this is we do a research action. We have to test our observation. Calvin's observation, if I was to start with him, is three. He has two clues. For every success he gets on his die roll for observation, he gets to put a clue on the scenario sheet. So we're hoping for two successes. So cross your fingers with me. Oh my gosh, two sixes, nailed it. Okay, so we're gonna take both of the clues and we're gonna place them on the scenario sheet. We are one clue away from progressing this particular story, which is awesome. Okay, he's got one more action to spend, so what should Calvin do with that? For Calvin's second action, I'm actually gonna have him help Agnes out. So what we're gonna use right now is the action on his player card, which says you may exchange any amount of health and or sanity with another investigator or ally in any space. So he can literally take on or exchange health and sanity with Agnes. And the reason that's important is because as we saw, we already had a little bit of a close call with Agnes in her sanity department. She's already got four. She can take a max of six. So I'm gonna actually take two sanity from her, or from her. And maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna put one of those sanity onto the end of time card that, that Calvin has. He currently has one sanity on there already, um, but he can hold a max on that card up to two. And then the card doesn't get discarded because it's not an ally. It's a innate condition that he has. And then he's gonna put the other sanity on his own character. So he's taking a little bit of craziness for himself uh, in order to help Agnes out. And that drops Agnes's sanity down to two which is much better and likely when a sanity effect triggers her, she's not going to die now. She still has a buffer of four sanity to take before she's in big trouble. So a huge help out from Calvin there, and that's going to finish his second action. All right, so Agnes' turn is here. We know exactly what we want to do with her. Let's keep getting rid of this Doom. So moving over here for one, I'm not going to choose to attack this thing. I'm actually going to choose to try to get this silly clue that she has on her and research it so we can place it on the scenario sheet and progress the Codex story. So let's go ahead and roll her observation. She has a two for her skill of observation, and we're rolling two dice, hoping for just one success. So hopefully this pans out. 
Oh, wow, we got a five and a six. So she did phenomenal on that roll. So now we're gonna go ahead and take this clue that she has. We're gonna place it on the scenario sheet and take a look at our deja vu card, which does say when there are three or more clues on the scenario sheet, add code or card four to the codex and do not remove this card from the codex. So in other words, this could flip later if we get two more doom because there's one doom on the scenario sheet right now. So we're gonna go to the codex cards, we're gonna grab four and bring it out. Okay, so we got the codex card at number four. It looks like this. It'll be added into the codex row. It says, parts of the mystery become clear. The note from yourself, the sense of deja vu, they're all because time is becoming unstuck. Effect may not be following cause properly right now, but you're certain that this phenomenon is the result of an arcane ritual performed by the cult you've been tracking in the city. You'll have to find the site of the ritual as well as the epicenter of the temporal disturbance if you're to have any hope of setting things to right. Armed with your knowledge, you set out again into the city and tried to ignore it when flowers fold into buds and raindrops fly upward to the sky. Take five markers, one blue, one red, and three white, and randomize them face down. Place one each face down on the Arkham Advertiser, the Black Cave, Independence Square, the Unvisited Isle, and Velma's Diner. Then flip this card. All right, so these are what the markers look like. So we got a red marker, a blue marker, and three white markers. We now have to go ahead, flip them up side down so we don't know what colors what, shuffle them around into a pile, and then distribute them amongst the five spaces that this codex card mentioned. The first token is gonna land at the Arkham Advertiser. The next token is going to land at the Black Cave. Another marker will be at the Independence Square. The fourth marker will be at the Unvisited Isle. The last marker is at Velma's Diner. Now that we've placed all five tokens on the game board, we can go ahead and flip the card as it states at the bottom here. So we're flipping it over. It says Profane Ritual. That doesn't sound good. Let's find out what we got in store here. You're not certain what the cult's ritual's intended effect was, but it's clearly linked to the odd flow of time in and around Arkham. You'll have to discover the ritual site to learn more. As an action, you can reveal a marker at your location and resolve the effect below based on its color. So there's a whole bunch of effects that are going to happen based on the markers that we find. Um, so when you reveal a white marker, we're going to find nothing of interest. If we reveal the blue marker, we're adding card six to the codex. And when you reveal the red marker, if the barrier is destroyed, you add a card four, a seven to the codex face down. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on there. If, the, if both the blue and red markers have been revealed, remove all other markers from the board and return this card to the archive. So with all that said and done, we have now fully resolved Agnes's turn as well as Calvin's turn. Uh, Calvin went ahead and helped out Agnes in his actions, was able to kind of stabilize her sanity, and Agnes went ahead and moved from Velma's Diner to Hibbs Roadhouse and was able to progress the clue, and actually both of them were able to progress the scenario by putting three clues on the scenario sheet, so that was fantastic. So a lot accomplished in that one, and now we're going to move into the monster phase. The first monster to activate will choose to be the robe figure, so it's going to move to the unstable space. So it's going to go police station and then down to this street area here as it moves ever closer to the graveyard. Now our occult ritualist is going to activate. It's going to place a doom token in any adjacent space. I'm going to choose to put it down at the unvisited aisle. I know you guys might think, hey, put it up here. We can get a remnant. But I really want to have Calvin move to and get to this particular token on the next turn and see if we can figure out what is there. Time for the encounter phase in the Anomaly neighborhood. So we're going to go ahead and grab an Anomaly card here and see what we get. So we have two Doom tokens to take into account. So that's going to put us in the middle of this card. Okay, this book contains details of events throughout history. But the longer you read, the less sense the story makes. Check your lore. Okay, so her lore is four. And I don't have anything else that can push that any higher. So here we go. We're going to roll our lore and see what we get. We got two successes, so we easily passed that, as well as knock and doom everywhere. Uh, if you pass, you realize that the events are laid out in reverse, and you read the book beginning with the last entry and ending with the first. You remove one doom from your space. Ah, I wanted two doom to be removed, so I guess every time it's not guaranteed. That's good for you guys to know, is that it's not always going to be something where if you succeed, you get rid of every doom token, but that is at least something towards getting rid of the doom there. Okay, so she has finished her encounter. Now we're going to move over to Calvin. 
All right, Calvin, so you're still in the downtown area. There's no more clues there, so we know we're not going to find any more clue cards, but we could find some decent type of uh, encounter here. So one downtown card to reveal, La Belle Luna. The goon doesn't want to let you into the Clover Club beneath the restaurant. You tell him you're here to see Naomi O'Banion. So we're going to go ahead and use our influence and try to get into this. So we got three influence for him. So Calvin's going to make a roll. Come on, successes. Oh yeah, tons. Look at that, guys. My rolls are insane right now. Um, so this says, if you pass a few games at the card tables, let you turn a profit. You gain three more dollars. Wow, Calvin's becoming quite the rich individual. So he's got $9 to his name now. That's a decent amount. He might need to go somewhere and do some shopping or something because that's pretty impressive. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and gain him $3 more so he'll have a total of $9. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the Mythos Cup. So we're going to grab two Mythos tokens for Agnes and see what we find. First one we pull is a clue. Nice. That's good. And the next one we pulled is a monster spawn. No, that's not a monster spawn. Silly, that's a doom token. So we're going to be putting a doom token out. So which one do we want to do first? Uh, I don't know. Let's do let's do the doom token first because I don't want the clue to disappear or something nice like that to happen. So the doom token is going to be the first one we, we, bleh, we resolve. So we're going to go ahead here and discard the bottom card of the event deck face up and place a doom on it based on the back of the card. So we've got ourselves, oh, so it's a river town and it's going to be the black cave. Wouldn't you know it right where this thing is. So we're going to have a Doom token show up there. Wonderful. Oh no, guys. We got four Doom on Rivertown now. We need to mitigate that ASAP. That's going to be a problem. And we're going to take this card and it's going to be discarded into the event card discard pile. So that's going to be up there. So now, whoo, this is going to get interesting. Okay, and then we resolve that token. So we'll take that one away. We're moving into the Clue token. So the Clue token is going to have us take the top card of the event deck and place one clue in its neighborhood and shuffle the card into the top two cards of that neighborhood deck. So that's pretty cool. So the top one is going to be the north side, which is really far away from us and nowhere where we want to be. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and put a clue token out there at the north side. So let's do that and also shuffle this card into the top two cards of the north side deck. So the card's been shuffled into the top two cards of the north side deck. We'll put another clue here to signify there are two clues now to go after there if we so choose. And that is going to resolve uh, Agnes's Mythos Cup poll. So let's do one for Calvin. All right, Calvin, let's see what you got. Let's see what two tokens you are going to get. You get a blank. So nothing. That could be good. Actually, those are always good. Blank is good. That's not good. That is going to be a monster spawn, which we love so much. So draw the bottom card of the monster deck and put it where the spawn mentions to put it. So let's grab the bottom one. It is, oh my gosh, it's a Keening Hound. That's not good. The Hound of Tindalos. This monster is back. I've seen this one in Eldritch Horror so many times. So it says spawn at the most doom. So the most doom currently would be the graveyard has two doom. So that's where it's going is the graveyard. And there's already an eyeless watcher there. Oh my gosh. So this Keening Hound is going to end up in the graveyard. But you know what I just realized? I didn't activate the eyeless watcher. It's okay. It's not going to change gameplay too, too much. I just have to move it. It basically activates and moves to try to get closest based on a hunter keyword to the toward and engaging the lowest influence character for skill. So I'm going to be going ahead and moving it towards Agnes Baker. So it's going to be two, which is moving to the streets and then to the police station. She has the lowest influence at two, whereas Calvin has uh, three. So the Keening Hound that we just got is going to drop right here, thanks to Calvin's Mythos pulls. And it says spot the most doom, so this is going to be sitting now at the graveyard. It has a hunter keyword when it activates in the next monster phase, and it will move directly and engage the most, oh, the, the character that has the most remnants, which again is going to be Agnes Baker with three versus Calvin with two. So we finished another round, so let's do one more to round out the video. So we're going to start off with the action phase for our investigators. While actually making my decisions about what I want to do with Calvin and Agnes, I actually noticed something that I totally goofed on. Um, it isn't wrong. I chose to put sanity from Agnes. Remember back in a previous round, I put one sanity on until the end of time and one sanity on Calvin. That was silly because I totally forgot about the Elder Sign Amulet's ability that says once per round, if two or more horror would be dealt to this card, you prevent one horror. So this thing can hold up to four 
sanity. So why would I even bother putting it on the end of time? So I'm going to actually, because I took two from Agnes, I'd much rather put it on the Elder Sign amulet because I only end up putting one on the amulet because one gets discarded, which is a much, a much more efficient way of taking that sanity hit uh, for him. He doesn't end up taking anything on his actual character, which is much smarter. So I know I'm doing that kind of in retrospect, but it doesn't change the gameplay at all because I'm not anywhere near being killed off for Calvin. It was just me missing that particular piece on the Elder Sign. But it's very important to take a look at those types of cards when they kind of bank off each other because sometimes you can find efficiencies like that. So time to move ahead with the action phase for our investigators. We have so many options this time around, it's not even funny. We could try to take out monsters. We could try to remove anomaly from this particular neighborhood. We could try to prevent an anomaly from occurring down here because there are four doom tokens already. We could go after individuals that cause doom tokens. There's monsters flying around. Uh, we also could go after these new markers that are all over the board. And currently we actually have two markers in our neighborhoods that we're currently in. So I'm very tempted to do that. We did get three clues in the last uh, round that were able to be put onto the Codex card to progress the story, which then gave us this profane ritual. So essentially we're trying to find a ritual site, and I'm assuming that is going to push the story forward. So we probably should focus on that, even though this is kind of where the balance of Arkham Horror comes in. Do you continue to mitigate all the nastiness that's happening, or... Do you try to push the story forward when you have a chance? As of right now, I have a chance. The monsters haven't hounded Calvin, and Agnes has the ability to kind of duck and cover, basically, throughout the game. So I'm kind of tempted to go for the markers, because this might be one the one and only chance I can do so before monsters start just going bananas. And we're also going to have to, at some point, start dealing with those monsters. And we've done a decent job on a few of them, but uh, some of the more powerful ones are out now. So... Let's do one more round of attempting to push the forward uh, the story forward, and then we'll have to do some serious mitigation on the, the nastiness happening here. So let's start with Calvin, because he's the closest and furthest, I shouldn't say closest, the furthest away from the monsters, and also uh, we don't really want him to be involved with any of the monsters, because Agnes can hide from most of them. So let's have Calvin move to Independence Square, and we're going to reveal this marker as part of our, um, as part of the action from the Codex card. Ah, look at that. We got a blue. That's probably good. I hope. I think. What did blue do again? Uh, let's see. When you reveal the blue marker, add card six to the codex. Nice. Okay, and then do not remove this card. So basically the profane ritual card stays there, of course, because it references other cards. Now we're going to go to the codex uh, deck, and we're going to try to... Oh, not the codex deck. We're going to go to the... Yeah, we're going to add card six to the codex. So, ritual site. Oh, no way. We found the ritual site already? That's crazy. Okay, so I'm going to read this uh, giant blurb of text, and we'll also talk about the action here. So, the ground is marked with twisted and overlapping circles of wax and chalk. Skulls, wet red corpses, that sounds fun, and fetishes adorn stone slabs, the walls, and the ground all around. Clearly, this was the site of some mystical ritual. And judging from the prodigious... Uh, I don't even know what that says. Quantities of blood involved. Its aim was not benevolent. Wow. Two robed figures draw carved knives and advance towards you. You reclassify the location from past to active ritual site. Ooh. The space with the blue marker is the ritual site. Reveal cards from the bottom of the monster deck until you reveal two cultist monsters. Spawn them at the ritual site and put the rest on the top of the deck in random order. Oh my gosh, this could be terrible. So first off, we're going to go to the bottom of the monster deck and reveal until we find cultists. So, row figure. Perfect. And... Well, that was easy. <laughs> that was perfect. They were both there. That's, that works out. Okay, so we got the high priest and we have the robe figure. Robe figures are easy to kill. The high priest, probably not. Okay, so we're putting these guys here. Oh, Calvin, what have you done? Oh my gosh, this is going to be fun. All right, so we got lots of action going on up there. And then what else do we do? Um, we didn't have to pull any more cards. We don't have to deal with uh, putting anything back in random order. And here we go. Action. You may So as an action, you may remove five clues from the scenario to stop the ritual. If you do, remove the blue marker and flip this card. Perform this action only at the ritual site. You may remove five clues from the scenario to stop the ritual. Okay, interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, so we've got a, a new mission here. I'll show you guys the actual action so you can see it yourselves. That is what we have and what we are supposed to do next. 
So as of right now, we still have the three clues on here from before. This ritual psych card that just got added. Remember, I showed you guys the action here. It says you may remove five clues from the scenario to stop the ritual. So as of right now, my understanding based on the game rules is that I need to put two more clues onto this card. And then I can remove all of those clues in order to take an action while at the ritual site to stop the ritual. So we only need two more clues to do that. And there's one clue in Rivertown. So I could have someone head there like Agnes or something like that. And there's two clues inside of Northside, which is literally completely wide open and has no threat whatsoever. So I'm going to have to think about where I want to go to gain these clues to, pro to progress the story. So Agnes is going to want to go ahead and deal with this anomaly. So let's see if we get lucky. We're going to have her ward in this space to get rid of this doom and then move into the police station to do an encounter and hopefully be able to get rid of that doom and get rid of this anomaly so that we do not trigger this uh, doom situation over here on the scenario card because we're doing pretty good with the story so far. She gets four when she rolls for a lore check. So we're hoping for good things here. She just needs one success. That's two successes, so that's more than enough. Boom, that to uh, token is gone. She didn't uh, ward away two or more, so she doesn't get a remnant for that. But she did get rid of one of the Doom tokens there. Awesome. She's now going to move to the police station. She doesn't have to worry about the Eyeless Watcher because she has her wonderful tactical cloak. So uh, when they activate, they're not going to—they're going to ignore her. And she'll be ready to do an anomaly encounter, and hopefully we can get rid of that on that whole board. So we're doing pretty good, pretty good so far. So that's going to be the actions for both of our characters here. Now we're going to go into the monster phase, and this is going to be quite wild. We're going to go ahead and activate this guy first with a doom token. He's going to be placing a doom token on something adjacent here. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this one. Ooh, where should I put it? Let's put it in Arkham Asylum. I think that'll make sense. So there's three actually, just so you guys are wearing downtown. There's one, there's two on camera and there's one up where uh, Calvin currently is with the other monsters. So hopefully that doesn't come back, come around to hurt us. Um, but that's where I'm going to put it. I don't want to put two in one space because if it happens to trigger and another Doom lands on it, boom, we have an anomaly and that's too dangerous. So that one's resolved. Let's go up to Calvin and find out what the monsters that are near him are going to do. So Calvin's got two cultists up here in the ritual site. So the first one is a high priest, which is right here. Uh, this one actually doesn't even move at all. So it'll stay where it currently is. And it is considered a lurker. So all it's doing is placing one Doom in the current space, which is not good because that bumps this neighborhood up to a uh, total of four, but two in that particular space. So one more away from an anomaly showing up, but hopefully Calvin can help reduce that. Or maybe I can have Angus come over and, uh, and help her, or help him, sorry. So that's the high priest activation done. And then over here we have a patrol. So this guy, again, is going to be uh, moving towards the unstable space and engaging the highest influence character. So let's go, actually at this particular point, I believe this robe figure would engage him because he's in the same space as him. Because it doesn't, it's, yeah, he's already run into him, so he's just going to engage him. So I believe at this point, Calvin is going to be engaging this guy. He doesn't move at all. Um, because essentially what he would do is a rope figure would be moving towards the unstable space and engage whatever investigator happens to hit along the way. So it's already hit one. It's going to be Calvin. So we flip it over, and the damage Calvin will take is going to be the one health. So that's actually the first hit for Calvin, and this, of course, will stay engaged with him. He's going to have to deal with that. But that's okay. We knew that was going to happen, and we also knew we had to fight this individual at some point. So one health damage going to Calvin. That is his first. Now what I'll do is I'm going to place this onto his end of time um, card because if we get a reckoning ability, I'll be able to wipe those away. So I'm going to put that on his end of time card. And that is the one that looks like this and allows me to put up to two health and two sanity on it. And it never gets discarded. Reckoning allows me to remove one and one. So currently right now we have one and one. One sanity, one health. Okay, so those two guys have been resolved. Let's move over to the other side of the board where Agnes has a whole bunch of monsters near her. Okay, so we're going to start activating our monsters on this side of the board. So first off, we're going to have the robe figure. It moves. It's the easy one to do first. It patrols. It just moves around up to two spaces. It's heading towards the black cave. So it only needed one space to do so. Boom. It just moves here, and that's it. It's going to sit in the black cave area just off screen. We have two other monsters that have been in play for a bit here. We have to talk about where they're going. So the Keening Hound is another one. Uh, the Keening Hound, as you can see right here, is a hunter. It says move directly to and engage most remnants. So... The individual with the most remnants is technically Agnes Baker. However, she's wearing her tattered cloak, and that says, non-epic monsters ignore you while activating. 
So in other words, it doesn't even know that Agnes is on the board. Um, and do not engage you unless you attack or damage them. So this Keening Hound's not going to go after Agnes because of her cloak. It's actually going to head towards Calvin. And it moves, uh, let's see here, it says move directly and engage most remnants. Does this actually get straight to me? Because it doesn't actually have a movement uh, on it. So I think it just flies straight to me. It has an asterisk there. So in that spot. So I believe, yeah, move directly and engage most remnants. So that's going to be actually heading straight to Calvin. I can't do anything about it. So that's not fun. So this is going to fly right over to Calvin and it's going to hit him for two health and one sanity. Oh my gosh. And it's going to be actually engaged with him going forward. So now he's got two to worry about. Good news is I can actually keep quite a bit of sanity and, and damage and health on him without him going under. So as of right now, I'm putting one more health damage on his until the end of time. I'm going to put one more sanity on that card. So now that card is completely maxed. It doesn't get discarded because it's one of his innate kind of abilities. And we're going to hope that a reckoning can remove that at some point. And then he gets, I believe, one more health hit, which is going to go onto his Elder Sign amulet, which can hold two health and four sanity. It currently only has one sanity on it. So it looks like this, if you guys are wondering. Uh, once per round, if two or more horror would be dealt, and sadly it's only one horror that's being dealt. So he already had a sanity on this card, just so you guys know off screen, and I'm adding an extra health. And again, with this type of item, if I ever actually hit the maxes on him, well, that would be a whole issue by itself. But uh, as of right now, it's completely fine. So we'll put those there. That's good. We've kept his character card safe of any damage yet, but uh, he's going to have fun here coming into the next turn. He's going to need some help, probably. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the Eyeless Watcher. So the Eyeless Watcher here says that it moves up to two spaces. Hunter, it moves toward and engage the lowest influence character. And that is going to be, and normally would be, Agnes. But again, she's got the cloak. So uh, when they activate, they just ignore her. So they're going to head up towards Calvin. So as, as amazing as this cloak is, it's actually screwing Calvin over quite badly. So two is going to move it to here and it's going to engage me. So I got another one coming after Calvin, and this one's going to hit him for one sanity damage. So, so Calvin definitely has a lot, a lot to deal with right now. Uh, so we're going to grab another sanity damage. But remember, my Elder Sign Amulet can hold up to four. So, so far, so good. Uh, now that has two sanity on it. Um, so it's looking quite interesting for Calvin. I'm actually going to show you guys what it looks like over on his side of the board now. So this is Calvin's loadout right now. So he's got, until the end of time, he's got two health, two sanity, which maxes out that card. And then this one right here, the Elder Sign Amulet, can hold up to two health and four sanity, and he's currently got that on it. He has literally nothing on his character yet because his items are basically housing everything. It's a good thing he's got those, otherwise he'd be in big trouble. Uh, we have three monsters engaged with him, which are just off screen. So all of these guys are face up in his area. So I may have to have Agnes come over during this uh, next turn and help him out because uh, he's going to have some serious issues when he goes after those things. So with all the monsters done, their monster phase activations, we're moving to the encounter phase. So we might as well start off with Agnes here. She's going to get an anomaly encounter, and hopefully we can get rid of this last doom token and remove the anomaly. So the very first one here has a one doom token on it, so I'm going to go for that one. A vortex of images from the past and what you assume is the future swirls before you. You attempt to fix the present in place. Use your lore. I love that it uses lore because her lore is so good. So she's got four dice. We just need one success. Yes, got it. Whew, something good happened. Okay, if you pass, your efforts cause the storm to fade. You remove one doom from your space. Yes, the anomaly is over, finally. Okay, so she has successfully removed the anomaly from East Town. Awesome, well done. We have one less place to worry about for doom tokens hitting the scenario card. Whew, okay, that was well worth it. I'm glad that that actually panned out. And now we're going to go over to Calvin, who's going to have an encounter here at the Independence Square. And this comes from the downtown cards. So Anna Kaslo, the old soothsayer, is offering tarot readings. You may spend a dollar to have her tell tell you her for, uh, your fortune. <laughs> tell your fortune, sorry. If you do, the cards reveal that many challenges await you in the future. But you will triumph if you believe in yourself and trust your intuition. You gain the moon. So I'm spending a dollar because I have nine dollars. So I'm going to do that to gain the moon. I have no sweet clue what that is, but I'm going to go find it. 
Well, would you look at that? This is the card that it's referring to, the moon. It's an item, increase your focus limit by one. So now his focus limit is three, even though he hasn't focused yet. But look at this, it holds a three sandy in it. That's awesome. So that worked out perfect. Now I've got the ability to hold on to more sanity for him. That's, that's never a bad thing. So with the encounter phase out of the way, we're moving to the mythos phase again. Yay, not so much. Okay, so here we go, Agnes. Let's see what you got. Two tokens, give me something good, nothing bad. Ha, clue, nice. Okay, that's good, and what's next? A blank, sweet. Okay, so we got a blank, that's easily resolved. And let's go ahead with the clue here. So as we know with the clue token, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna draw a card from the event deck. And it's going to be the top card, and we're going to place the clue in the neighborhood that it mentions. So, the top card is downtown. Now check it out. That works pretty good. So, we're going to go ahead and grab a clue token. We'll put it right here. And we'll also shuffle this into the top two cards of the downtown encounter deck. Okay, that downtown clue card is now shuffled into the top two cards of the downtown deck. Here is the clue marker in the downtown area. We're now going to the bag to grab for Calvin. What is Calvin going to get? Calvin's getting... Oh, no, not another doom. Okay, and a blank. All right, so the blank is easily resolved, and now we're going to go ahead and resolve this doom token. Bottom card of the event deck is Rivertown. Oh, no. No. So the graveyard's going to get another anomaly, uh, or another doom token, I should say, but the whole neighborhood now is going under. So sadly, another Doom token in the graveyard area, thanks to that event card, has the icon right next to the graveyard. But either way, there's five Doom here now, so that's going to be an anomaly. There's also three in the graveyard, so either way, it's triggering an anomaly. Uh, this clue token stays there, but it's now going to be kind of stopped. So it's slowed down, essentially, you'll just leave it there. You can't, when you're in here again, you can't encounter the regular Rivertown encounters until this anomaly is taken care of. But you also don't go through the deck and rip it out. Uh, so it's not totally removed, it's just you're going to have a massive delay trying to go after that one you're still gonna have to remove all the doom from this area to get rid of the anomaly and then you can try to encounter and go after the clue so that's kind of sad because we just got one of one got rid of one anomaly and now we've got another one to deal with that could hurt us so constantly that mitigation in arkham is always there so again once you've done that you're going to take this card that you use and discard it so this will now go to the bottom of or in the event deck discard pile and this token now has been resolved so we have actually finished the Mythos phase as well as finished this video. So that is going to do it, guys, for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you saw anything I missed or you have any strategy tips or any kind of feedback as to what we should do next. So here's a better overview of the game board currently, where my thoughts lie in terms of what we're going to start doing next turn. And you guys can let me know below whether this is a decent strategy or not. Is I'm going to tackle this area similar to what I did with Agnes with the East Town. I'm going to eventually bring her down here, but our focus right now in my mind is going to be downtown. The reason is there is a clue here. If I can get Agnes and I can get this individual into this area, then we can eventually go after this. But we also really have to help Calvin out. So I'm not going to be able to do encounters while I'm engaged with a monster, uh, but we really need to help Calvin out because he will take significant damage if uh, the two of us don't work together in order to get rid of some of those monsters off him. So I'd like to clear that area up as much as I can. Once some of the monsters are dealt with, then I can start dealing with the doom there as well to stop another anomaly and hopefully start to encounter things downtown. So I think monsters become our focus now with a second emphasis on trying to get clues from the locations that have monsters in them. Uh, and then we're going to probably have to send Agnes down here to deal with this whole mess that is likely going to start triggering doom tokens to be put on this scenario. And uh, that deja vu card might flip in, uh, in, a, in a situation that might cause us a little bit of stress. Either way, guys, having a ton of fun with this new revision. Hope you guys are enjoying it as well. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything. I'd be glad to uh, comment on anything you guys have in terms of uh, feedback, suggestions, or what you would do next. That's what I want to hear. So thank you. And as always, keep on rolling solo.